my name is malik bulusu i'm a cloud firmware architect at microsoft today uh, we're going to talk about uh, microsoft project olympus rack management uh, ocb has been a great uh, uh, you know catalyst in promoting innovation uh, uh, with respect to cloud hardware engineering and microsoft has been a big part of ocp and uh, today uh, as a uh, as a part of this uh, microsoft project olympus initiative we are really excited about uh, sharing uh, the latest uh, uh, advances in rack management um, we want to contribute it back to ocp and today's topic is about that uh, can anybody uh, take a guess as, as to what these images are Yeah, there are cities, but which cities? London, London yeah, that's right. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you won. <laughs> you just <laughs> and can anybody guess what is the other Im uh, image to the right? Huh? No, okay. Yeah, the, the, the other one is uh, to the left we have London, and to the right we have uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and. Uh, there's a reason why I put them together. I mean, um, uh, these are like, uh, that's a super view of La London, courtesy NASA. On to the right, we have uh, Phoenix, uh, again, courtesy NASA. Uh, if you see the, uh, the cities, I mean, if you were to be the uh, responsible for uh, infrastructure management b uh, between these two cities, which city you think is better geared for uh, population growth? You know? Phoenix, right? Yeah, th I would guess that too. And um, in fact, uh, uh, you know, when I say infrastructure management, it is you know gas, electricity, uh, water, storm water, sewers, you know, internet and phone lines. If you have to, if you were to be given this daunting task of managing the you know resources to the city, uh, actually, if you wind the clock back 150 years ago, the population of London was about four million, and today it is uh, the Greater London is about 13 million, but the the city of London is about eight million, which is in 150 years, London grew by twofold. In 150 years ago, the population of city was 240. And you know, all the city, entire city of Phoenix could be sit, uh, you know, housed in this, inside this room. Whereas today, the city of uh, Phoenix is uh, about 1.5 million, and the greater uh, the metro of Phoenix is about 4.5 million. The city grew by 6,000 fold. Uh, I mean, uh, there are great learnings that we can pick from this. Uh, cloud, uh, I mean, and this can be related to cloud because the scale, simplicity, uh, and st I mean, the structure offers clues to basically simplicity. That is the idea, you know. If you want to accomplish scale, uh, you know, structure is key. You know, that's what uh, this learning is what we want to take it to uh, the, the rest of the topic. And uh, now, switching gears, cloud essentially, you know, if you look at the data plane, you know, uh, uh, cloud essentially is nothing but a large collection of OS instances, hypervisor instances, and VM instances. That's it. You know, if I'm a customer of cloud, all I'm looking at is my VM that is running in the cloud or my OS instance that is run running in the cloud. Now, if you ask uh, uh, someone like, uh, uh, that's, that is if you ask a software engineer. You know? But if you ask CMEC, uh, <laughs> you know, you'll say, it's a bunch of servers for me. You know? You know, these servers, it's not just their servers. The variety of servers is changing. As, as we have just uh, you know, got off the topic uh, on the GPGPUs for you know, getting uh, you know, machine learning, uh, you know, we had you know, storage, queues, compute, variety of workloads, variety of uh, server designs. The variety is changing, right? Cloud essentially is a hybrid mix of large uh, collection of servers. But you know, if you have to manage this color, you, you know, hundreds of thousands of servers, you need to get to some structure. Just like Phoenix is able to you know, um, deal with the uh, population growth, you know, we need some structure. And, and Rack becomes that structure. And if you can essentially manage the Rack, you can manage, this, manage the cloud. That is, that is the idea. Rack becomes a fundamental. Rack becomes the fundamental building block to uh, impart structure into the cloud. And if you can manage the rack, 
you can manage the cloud. That's the idea. And you know, when I say rack manager, I am report. Uh, I am saying both it's hardware as well as firmware and software. With this notion, let's get into the next. Uh, so, uh, when when you look at rack manager, what do you want from it? What are the key functions of rack manager? If uh, I mean, before we get into what what what. Uh, the the key functions of rack manager are let's take the case of a personal computer if you want to interact with a personal computer you know there are two things that are required you need to be able to supply power to it and you need some interface to interact with the computer right uh, what if a system hangs you know or what if a system there's a blue screen or a hang of whatever uh, sort you know most of us have either yanked out the uh, uh, you know power plug or we have pressed the power button these functions are uh, i mean even when managing cloud we need to serv service these functions so in other words we need ability to uh, switch on and switch off a, a cloud node uh, uh, and we need ability to interact with it for the purpose of management so the, the there are two key functions here one is power management, and the other one is out of band, uh, you know, uh, server management. The other thing is um, uh, the, the the rack manager that we have designed here uh, can go in. It can go into a PMDU, or it can go into one of the one U slots, depending on whether the chassis is a WCS uh, compliant or not, right? So uh, I mean, so that the, the, that is how the rack manager is integrated into the rack. In terms of communication, network is uh, we have switched from serial communication to network communication uh, for bandwidth, re bandwidth reasons. Um, and uh, for p managing the power to the node, uh, we have three signals here. One is whether a blade is present in the rack or not. That is one signal. We want to be able to switch on and switch off the server. And the, the, the last thing we want to do is to be, be able to throttle power. A power within the rack. Uh, power uh, given to the blade can be, uh, you know, throttled based on an external event or even intrinsic to the rack, you know, uh, and again based on uh, some policies that we uh, enact. Uh, rack manager uh, uh, also has to be intelligent because it has to have a way to, uh, you know, meter the power uh, that is feeding, uh, that is fed to the rack, uh, and may take some controlling decisions. Um, then uh, we, we we also added a couple of uh, uh, other features to rack manager one is remote debug remote debug helps us you know if a system is hanging and a, a, a server is ha hung we should be able to talk to the jtag via bmc uh, you know uh, intervention so bmc jtag uh, and a server blade rack manager becomes the interface for that uh, we also have um, uh, remote media support, uh, which can be for you know pixie imaging and things like that. We can uh, use th that feature. And one of the things that we have done uh, with the latest uh, instance of Rack Manager is to switch from uh, serial interface to uh, network. With this, it is now possible to send la large blobs of uh, you know firmware images, whether it's BMC versus BIOS whether it is any FPGA or other uh, images that can be sent from Rack Manager to the BMC and which will in turn assist the updates to happen. So that channel is now open. So, uh, so these are the key uh, uh, you know, functions of Rack Manager. At a high level power and an interface, sideband interface uh, via a network and then you know, uh, the, la the usability that we imparted into the Rack. So in terms of uh, before we started designing the hardware for the rack manager, we had to go through some soul searching, uh, you, know, uh, you know, which, which uh, processor to use. And uh, you know, we had a, a toss up between a speed and uh, arm. And uh, based on uh, the end-to-end the, you know, the -end holistic requirements that we have, we you know, particularly dual NIC, you know, we, there are different peripherals to deal with here. Uh, you know, we also needed a high accuracy AC to DC, uh, uh, you know, convert, uh, con con uh, con conversion. Um, then there are some offloads for power calculations. You know, this is, this is something that we need to do for throttling uh, and uh, variety of other reasons. 
we uh, narrowed down on arm um, we uh, and uh, also for the uh, networking uh, for the manageability traffic uh, we uh, uh, basically the con uh, we chose uh, a switch which is discrete uh, and uh, basically an arm design with a dedicated uh, network switch and we can go into the details further now so in terms of the control plane, if you look at it, the, the, the manageability traffic that's going in and out of uh, rack manager, um, you know, uh, the, to the rack bound, all the traffic is the Redfish, SSH, uh, or also IPMA communication to BMC. On to the left, we have Redfish, again SSH, and also some legacy uh, 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 REST interfaces. These are going into the row or, uh, you know, fabric bound traffic, you know. A uh, little bit um, uh, closer look at uh, the rack manager. It's a very simple mo module. It's, it looks like a PCI card, standard PCI card size module. Uh, it actually fits into the PMDU. If you have seen the Microsoft demo boots, on the back side, uh, you can see the rack manager. It is going into the PMDU. It's a very s uh, um, uh, relatively small card. Uh, and uh, it's an ARM processor, uh, you know, uh, 4376. And um, you know there are two network ports going uh, out of uh, 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 this card. One is going to, uh, 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 towards uh, the fabric, and the other one is basically management switch bound. Uh, we have for the crash card kind of scenarios, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, the, there are three serial ports there. Uh, one is to DG, one is going to the debug port, and the other one is basically. Uh, uh, again, to man management switch. Um, typically, uh, we we mainly use the network interface, uh, but we also have this provision. Uh, and um, in terms of uh, memory, uh, we have DDR3 memory. I think it's one GB or maybe two GB. I have to. Um, uh, and the other one is we have a QSPY and EMMC. Uh, the, uh, that's where the firmware is. Uh, Rack manager uh, firmware is uh, resident. You know. GPIOs, uh, GPIOs are required uh, uh, for you know detecting the bla blade presence, for asserting you know for throttling and for you know uh, enabling blades and things like that. Uh, we have uh, you know um, GPIO buffers that are uh, that are used. You know, if uh, then we also have behind the, behind the I square C we have you know uh, sensors. You know we have temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and flu. Uh, we have also sub, uh, LEDs for attention, power, uh, status, uh, and things like that, right? Debug status and things like that. Also, uh, on the, um, the, the the rack manager, there is a PCIe by 16 and PCIe by 8 edge fingers. They will be, uh, to help rack manager going to the PMDU or basically the back, back plane. So this is the composition of rack manager. To the right is the you know hardware schematic. Uh, In terms of, uh, okay, one more thing I want to say. Uh, uh, picture to the right is the rack boundary. On the top we have is the rack manager. Middle is the switch, and bottom is the uh, servers. We we have a 48U. Typical is 48U chassis. That we that's what we have. Uh, uh, rack we have. So one thing I want to say is the the, uh, the pictures there are not drawn to scale. For instance, rack manager is very tiny versus you know switch versus uh, server. But I just uh, it's more like a conceptual diagram. Um, that's how they are uh, hooked together within a rack. Uh, as far as the management switch is concerned, uh, it's a general purpose L2 switch with uh, L2 plus uh, switch. There are 48 uh, network ports, uh, um, uh, Ethernet ports. Then also there are there is um, you know provision to interact with the switch serially. Uh, there is also PSUs, uh, which are kind of one plus one AC redundant, uh, redundant power supply. Um, and uh, orientation wise, the rack manager, uh, the, the network ports are facing on the cold aisle, uh, same, same way the uplink and UART. And uh, uh, on the back side, we have the PSUs, right? And uh, each port is capable of uh, you know individual VLANs and DHCP address pools. Uh, and, uh, yeah, essentially a very uh, general purpose device uh, that can do the needful 
to manage entire rack. This is a uh, uh, this is a shift in uh, our strategy from uh, the old school. Um, uh, the, the previous generation we had uh, chassis managers, which are like um, uh, four. We had four chassis managers. So, so essentially, we, um, it's a uh, more optimal design, uh, and uh, it also gives us some out-of-band features, uh, such as you know firmware uh, updates and debug, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, okay, uh, getting into the um, implementation. So we have a combination of Yocto and Repo. Repo is lies on top of Yocto. Uh, you can you can get the you know sources required um, both for the linux kernel the u boot the bsp and then the applications and services right so we have tweaked the uh, recipes and our predominantly microsoft changes have been to the recipes and to uh, the applications and services that we have added uh, and the it's a very high level uh, diagram um, essentially we fetched the uh, uh, sources uh, and the pedigree for you know kernel or u boot or is all uh, you can you can know from the implementation that we have already put in the uh, github uh, essentially we do the bitbag in the bitbag it is a it is possible to have your own custom tools uh, that that can be compiled as a part of the build uh, build process uh, but essentially the uh, it yields uh, two things one is you know i mean it's again optional whichever way you want Using the Bitbag, pro, we can build the uh, EMMC image. We can build the you know QSPY image. Uh, we can also do emulation, etc. Uh, so it's a very high level. Uh, this is what uh, uh, we have done. Uh, just to uh, again, you know, the Microsoft. Uh, we are using Linux on our. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, this is a rack manager firmware stack. It's a very simple stack. It's an embedded Linux uh, implementation. Uh, typically, uh, we have uh, you know support uh, for the there's a ROM, uh, there's a secondary bootloader that in fact launches uBoot, and uh, which in which in turn launches the kernel, and eventually the application stack is loaded. Uh, so uh, I mean, uh, so in terms of features, right? It's a very small footprint. Uh, you, know, you know, we we don't have uh, you know fancy uh, OS installations going there. Um, it's all embedded, and uh, uh, again, you know, as I said, uh, SSH and uh, SSH for CLI, and we have Redfish for HTTPS, um, and um, we also have uh, you, uh, you know over the UART a CLI console. The 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 basic functions, right? You know. Off on and uh, you know out of band BMC in interface. These are these are the basic services that the rack manager uh, um, provides. So this is the uh, so the the, the typical buildup of the software stack. So uh, we also have um, ability to uh, re recover images or even do a firmware updates. Um, uh, so, if the QSPY image, uh, we can even control which image to boot to using the pin straps, uh, and it's also possible to do re recovery over Ethernet. You know, so this is the typical uh, recovery uh, flow for the uh, for the images that sit on the uh, you know QSPY as well as uh, uh, you know EMMC. This is uh, another. Uh, perspective of the same stack essentially whether it is a system firmware uh, whether you look at the data plane or at the control plane you know there's hardware on top of that there is firmware uh, and then there's a maybe a kernel driver stack and there's a user application stack and this is a typical uh, layout and in this case uh, what, what this uh, schematic is uh, depicting is that the interfaces that we have, both RS uh, over the RS-232 or R, R over the network, right? Um, they are uh, they are kind of uh, uh, you know there's an authentication layer, uh, 
which uh, which ensures that you know uh, you know the commands that are invoked we have a journaling uh, requirement so everything gets journal so uh, there's a logging interface so who is uh, only uh, only authorized personnel uh, can access these interfaces and then we can do the logging you know there and beneath that uh, you know there are respective interfaces there are verticals essentially uh, uh, for power mo mo monitoring uh, uh, basically for throttling uh, for communications with bmc and for communication with uart so these are all the verticals um, so basically uh, this hardware and uh, this driver layer essentially the logging and other um, in infrastructure on top of that is authentication layer uh, these are the um, commands cl classes of commands so you can uh, manage the users there this is uh, uh, then we have management switch related commands there rack manager uh, basically all these commands are self explanatory firmware recovery firmware update you know these are all rack manager uh, related commands so uh, there are services both over serial port for network uh, for power management um, similarly as uh, interfacing with bmc uh, there are uh, a bunch of these commands we can also do uh, updates to bios you know bmc fpga updates over this uh, uh, through the intervention of bmc so all those uh, kind of commands are encoded um, in, in our implementation uh, we can you know psu status and things like that so some of the uh, new uh, enhancements have been related to the firmware debug and things like that so uh, uh, the our implementation carries uh, you know all this all this functionality so this is um, another perspective uh, um, of of the two interfaces that we have one is the rest and the other one is cls um, uh, the the left basically this uh, redfish schema uh, the schema is um, on top of redfish standard schema we also have extensions and those extensions are listed there um, the, again you know we wanted to retain the uh, compatibility with the, our earlier implementation but we build on top of that so that is the theme uh, and to the right we have uh, cli commands for the uh, these cli commands you can know the you know status of blade or, uh, or you can sh okay, in this case we are we are showing the health of the uh, you know uh, the bl the blade uh, and um, we also have uh, commands uh, for you know power status and things like that so this this, this is a very um, essentially a very simple device uh, you know uh, uh, dijkstra once said you know simplicity is pre prerequisite for reliability and you know uh, one of the ways to uh, you know get uh, cloud management uh, you know under control is uh, through a very simple interface and that's what we we have done in this case and we would like to share it with the rest of the community uh, la so again the, here are the links to the project olympus uh, you know uh, our specs uh, that we share under olympus whatever we share is at uh, at the ocp side similarly we have a github link where the code uh, where the olympus related uh, collateral is shared we also have software implementation for rack manager shared at this below link uh, you know the data sh uh, sheet for the texas instruments am4376 is here and we also use uh, redfish so yeah this is uh, this is the story of uh, rack manager <laughs> yeah. thank you very much malik um, we might have maybe time for one question Um, just to confirm, um, so through the rack manager, you could update the firmware of the servers, the BMC, the BIOS, any other component within the x86. Uh, we can we can update BIOS, BMC. Uh, there are a few other uh, CPLD, and uh, we also have an interface to you know like some auxiliary cards that we have. We can update the firmware or JTAG. Is it is it JTAG? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's over JTAG. So Rack Manager um, essentially uh, can send these images to the targeted nodes, but it's BMC which will be the host at the time to actually make the. Uh, so BMC BMC should have those features implemented. Is that correct? can be PSU, it can be uh, uh, BIOS, it can be BMC itself, or it can be a PGA card, so all the firmware component can be updated through BMC. Thank you. Uh, uh, does source code I open source? Yes, I mean, I mean, we shared it uh, uh, on the GitHub. Uh, you you, you should be one more, one more question. You should be able to download the source code. As of uh, yesterday or day before, we posted the code. So the recommend, uh, rack management can also manage the power supply. Rack management uh, manager c can also manage the power supply. So what do you mean by, by that? So we are collecting data. The rack manager is collecting data from the PSU for the telemetry purpose. And also for the, we will discuss it in the next session for the power capping. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about power supply or for throttling and things like that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we, we need to close now, and you yeah. guys can talk later. Thank you very much.